Today in the news, the AMD Infinity Fabric gets a huge boost for the next generation. We got a packaging leak from the same company. NVIDIA's 4070 looks amazing. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. The company's uh, Zen 4 based Ryzen 7000 series is coming pretty soon. And because of that, more and more information is slipping out. In this case, Yuri, the creator of the Hydra tweaking software for Ryzen CPUs, got his hands on a pre-release BIOS. And he's sharing some insight on it. So if we look here, there's a bunch of stuff that he found, but the most interesting one is max IF frequency 3000 megahertz. This is super important because Ryzen CPUs always had deep ties with the uh, Infinity Fabric Clock for performance. So bringing that up to 3000 megahertz allows for way higher memory clocks without sacrificing the ratio between the Infinity Fabric and the uh, CPU's clock speed. With Zen 2 and 3, 1600 megahertz Hertz was the uh, default for the Infinity Fabric Clock, and as you went higher, up to 2000 megahertz, although it was really hard to get there, you would see very high performance improvements. Now, does it mean that you'll get to 3000 megahertz? I highly doubt it. It says that it's the sweet spot, and that would allow you to run DDR5 6000, but as you can see, the sweet spot is not always reachable. With uh, Ryzen 5000, the Zen 3 sweet spot is DDR4 4000, but getting an IF clock of 2000 megahertz is almost impossible. So it's the perfect world sweet spot. Now there are other things that he caught within that BIOS, but one of them that caught my attention is CCX clock control for CCX. Now, Yuri himself doesn't know what that refers to. He actually posted a poll on Twitter about that specific line, but four CCXs is reminiscent of Zen 2, not Zen 3, because with Zen 2, we had four CCXs divided into two CCDs, so chiplets, and with Zen 3, that got removed. So is AMD going back to that four core per CCX, or is this something related to another Zen 4 product like Zen 4C, which is supposed to go all the way up to 128 cores? That's the codename Bergamo AMD Epic CPU. Anyways, that's pretty cool info that we got from the BIOS. Let me know what you guys think down below. Moving on, let's talk NVIDIA. So we know that the RTX 4000 series is coming. We don't know when exactly, we don't know how, but one thing that keeps happening is updates on the specifications. And we got that again for the RTX 4070 from copied 7 kimmy over on Twitter. There's actually a little bit of good news here. If we take a look, we see that the update for the RTX 4070 includes 7,680 CUDA cores, 12 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory at 21 gigabits per second, so we're actually going back to 12 gig instead of 10, a TDP of 300 watts, and a TimeSpy Extreme score that is higher than an RTX 3090 Ti. So that's the info that we had before, and now Copite is adding the base boost and max clock speed of this specific GPU. We have a base clock of 2310 megahertz, a boost clock of 2610 megahertz, and a maximum that should hover over 2800 megahertz. That's 2.8 gigahertz. That's that's something that rivals AMD's insanity with the RX 6000 series. And the good news here is that the power consumption dropped 15 watts from the prediction. That's good, 285 watts. If it beats a 3090, I say that this power consumption is not bad. Of course, as we go up the ranks with the 4080 and 4090, the uh, wattage is uh, all over the place. It goes all the way up to 800 watts according to the rumors, but yeah, 285, kind of reasonable for a high-end GPU. Then let's go back to some AMD news because apparently their packaging leaked. Videocards.com received a photo of what looks like the next gen Ryzen 9 CPU box. This box looks to be slightly bigger than the usual Ryzen boxes, but I mean, it's a Ryzen 9, it's probably a little more premium after all. Now, the person who leaked the photo to videocards.com did share some information about the MSRP of the next generation. They didn't actually give us any kind of prices, but a comparison to what's currently available. So the Ryzen 7 7700X's MSRP should be equal to the Ryzen 7 5700X MSRP. That's a little bit weird because the 5700X, first of all, released a couple of months ago, and second of all, is 299. That would be dirt cheap for an eight core CPU, remember. 
the 5800X released at 449. Speaking of which, the Ryzen 7 7800X, its MSRP should be over the MSRP of the 5800X, which was, once again, 449. So are we looking at a eight core $500 processor? I personally really hope not. I mean, 500 was the price of the 12 core CPU a couple of years ago with the 3900X. And then the Ryzen 9, so that would be the 7900X and the 7950X, the uh, MSRP would be over their counterpart in the 5 thousand series. Now take this info with a grain of salt. It did come with an actual leak of the next generation box, but I don't think that AMD is going to inflate the prices by this much. If they do, it's going to be a tough sell for me. I mean, I would not pay more than I would say 379 up to 449 for an eight core CPU. And I don't think you should either. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, it's right here to see the latest video, right here. To subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.